Hey -o everybody, Haku here with my review for Tower of God Chapter 394 Season 2 Episode 314. I had to quickly glance over to make sure I had the number right. Uh, so sorry this is a few days late. Um, I've been sick lately. I haven't been able to breathe through my nose all day today. So um, yeah, I'm barely getting in here. So um, not sure how that's going to affect me uh, talking today or if I'm going to sound nasally or annoying or anything as if I don't usually. Um, but I'm actually glad that this got pushed back a day or two because I had more time to discuss it and like read through it a bunch more and take more notes on it. Uh, and I really... Before I get into this, uh, since I was about to go off on a tangent, I'm going to control the tangent and just say uh, I will be answering more and more comments, but I'm planning to do something new with the hot Q&A starting next week. Uh, since it keeps getting pushed back so much, I'm just going to, whether I'm updated with comments or not, just do it every week. And if I miss comments one week, I can just go back and if I answer them later, I can add them in the next week. Uh, I feel like instead of working all the time to get that and the special videos done I should just be sure that I do that each week instead of working really hard on both and getting neither done just get one done even if it's uh, not as organized as maybe I would like it to be so I will still be answering all your comments that I'm behind on uh, and answering future comments as well I haven't really been uh, too great on answering everybody lately so uh, sorry about that but yeah controlled tangent over let's talk about the actual chapter starting from the beginning and there's a lot of things to discuss with these new characters and the future is really really exciting and Evan Kell mostly because a ton of people have had a ton of different theories about a ton of things and we're gonna have to sort through this um, also there were some translation issues that line had going on but I'll get to them as the parts get here so to start at the beginning uh, Evan Kell is said to be known to be aggressive and unpredictable and that again has me on the same level that I've been for like two weeks now where I'm saying Evan Kell may or may not be with FUG but uh, they're definitely uh, kind of I think they're probably not with FUG just my opinion just my guess they're probably not with FUG they are just very independent uh, they're just doing what they want to do. Now the chances there totally that they are with FUG and it would make sense if they are. Uh, I'm just saying my personal belief is that they're probably just a lone wolf kind of uh, kind of character. Uh, also, if they are with FUG, they should totally be a slayer. I mean, if the power of the ancients gives you the power to kill immortals, at least, and it seems like if it's OP enough, maybe it should be. Uh, so, and she's number 60. So yeah, I feel like maybe she should be a slayer if she is part of FUG. But either way, getting out of myself. Um, also, she's been gone somewhere un unseen or unknown. Uh, so I think that's got to be important since it was brought up um, that she has been gone somewhere. Wherever she's gone, whatever she's done is probably important. Uh, then we have the arrival of the third tier servant of Calavon, Tinker Yolche. And that's where uh, it, one of the... Um, the first problems with the translation comes along. They say the third servant, but uh, it was corrected by somebody on Reddit, and of course I was linked to it in the comments of uh, the live reaction, uh, but I had already read it by then. So if you go to the comments of the live reaction, there should be a link there talking about the translation sort of sketchiness or the uh, mistranslations. And they're clearly saying like second tier, third tier apparently. So this is the third tier servant and they are Tinker Yolche. And I kind of like their design. Their design reminds me a bit of the protagonist of Nier Automata. I have the game but I haven't played it yet because I've uh, not had too much time for that in general. But still, um, they remind me of the main character for that. Uh, and Kalavan is the 4th Squadron Commander of Zahard's army, and like I said in the live reaction, we have so much going on. The Royal Enforcement Division, the army, all these other groups and stuff. There's a, a lot of things going here that CU has not really delved too deep into, not really explained very much. And in a lot of ways, that's a good thing because CU can do whatever he wants with them now. He can change his mind, he can just do whatever in general. Um, whereas if he had specifically explained how every little thing worked, while that would clear things up for the fandom and we'd have less of the problem that the fandom definitely has of people treating their theories as reality, um, 
And that's something that a lot of people, and myself included, have talked about a lot with just generally being a problem. But, um, yeah, I think that if things were super explained like that, it would be an issue of any time CU wanted to change things, and this is a long-running series, and years down the line, things are probably going to want to change in your mind if you're a good author like CU is, and like CU has said in the past, there are things that he's had ideas for, but he's changed them by the time they came around in the main story, which is why some of the older blog posts are a little bit, um, I don't know the word, not really sketchy, but a little bit, uh, you can't totally take everything they say word for word. Um, so it would be an issue of contradicting himself if CU had made it super specific. So I like that we just have these general things like the Army and the um, Rural Enforcement Division that we just don't totally understand yet. Um, Yuan Sung calls Kalavan the Human Collector, and Yuan Sung knows of him, but he, doesn't, but he didn't know that he joined the Army. So either Yuan Sung's just really out of the loop, this is a really new thing that's happened, or it's something that was kept secret. If Yuan Sun, di with all the information he has, didn't know that Kalavan had joined the army to become a friggin' squadron commander. Um, Tinker apparently uses water burps. I know it is translated as blurps, um, or blurp, when uh, she's making the bubbles, but uh, that, I would presume, is another user of water type, water t or water quality Shinsu like Lulu had. Um, Evan Kell's weapon is cool, and I just noticed this chapter that it's really similar to Sachi's weapon, uh, like Sachi's wand, where she swings it around and it kind of forms the attack out of Shinsu toward the end of it. Uh, so I think it works in a similar way to that. Uh, another servant weirdly jumps in, but they don't do anything, and they don't get any introduction. So I thought that was weird that they, well, that one, they were even there to begin with if they weren't going to get an introduction or do anything. And two, that everybody else got the introduction except for this random character that jumped in. Yeah, I really don't understand what's going on there. It seems like the chapter could have been the same if that random servant didn't jump in, because the one that blocked the Shinsu wasn't the random one that jumped in, but rather it was the high-ranker Yolker who was a second-tier servant. So what the hell is first-tier if a second-tier is one of the top thousand people in the tower? Um, so Yolker's design's really cool. I actually like it a lot. They remind me a bit of Vargarv, I said before, uh, but I really like the design, actually. Um, and he brings up that Kalavan is at the last station. Evan Kell is revealed to have the power of the ancients. Okay, so my theory here. I went up because there was a lot of discussion of, oh, does this mean she's one of the people with both male and female? No. I went up and looked at, and looked at all the stuff that we learned about the Power of the Ancients explanation and everything we learned about the explanation of Yura's family. I think Yura's family is a complete separate thing. The only thing that you could say that they have in common is that Yura's family was said to be cursed by Zahard after betraying him, and it was also said that the um, that there was a curse placed on the family of the native ones. So, again, it's kind of a stretch, but I feel like if they were super related, then we probably would have learned about the Ancient Ones and the Native Ones before we learned about Yura's family, but we learn about Yura's family first. So I think there's a clear difference, and they're probably two separate things. There's a chance that maybe one branch of the Native Ones' descendants became Yura's family, um, but I think they're two totally separate things, so I don't think that's the issue with Evankel. And with the issue of the whole gender thing that people have been bringing up, I said last week that when CU said, uh, it used to be a guy, but it turned out to be a girl when they showed up in the story, and nothing's right until it shows up in the story, that to me is clearly kind of saying that I had planned for the character to be a guy, but by the time it came around to put the char character in the story, I had changed it and just decided for them to be female. Uh, the translation error thing brings up that in this chapter they use both he and she to refer to Evan Kell. But the thing is, and I've seen this a bunch of time with a bunch of other characters when there was argument over their gender, is that Korean doesn't really use a ton of gender specific words. So most words they're using don't really 
like tell either way and that was another thing that the person brought up when they were talking about the translation errors is that there was no male or female specific word used for Evangel here and that's not unusual it's not like they're do it it's not like see who's doing that on purpose it's just not unusual in Korean to not use a gender specific word for a person so again Evangel I think is clearly a woman. There's a chance they could be from the same family line as Yura, but I really doubt it at this point. We don't... It's just that they could be, totally, but I think that jumping to that conclusion, we have no evidence to jump to that conclusion right now. Um, so uh, my theory actually, though, bring it into that, bring it into what we actually learned about the power of the ancients, is when Edwan was explaining it, there was a giant that split into five beings and the descendants of the five beings are the native ones and Rack is a direct descendant and the power of the native ones they are said to be able to turn their body into an element or whatever they have control over the elements and Rack is pure blood because he isn't just turning his body into the element but he's fusing the element into his body like he did with the rocks so that's how Edwan could tell he was a direct descendant but Edwan was like most all the direct descendants I've seen were super strong why are you so weak so <laughs> poor Rack um, com constantly getting owned my poor alligator uh, but another example was Hess was a confirmed example of somebody Hess could turn his whole body to dirt and his body was basically made of dirt and that's because he was like not a pure blood but just a random partial blood descendant so right now we don't know the exact details and again it's not something we could guess um, but my theory is that Evan Kell's power is to turn her body into flames like Hess could turn his body into um, turn his body to dirt or like Rack can fuse stone into his body and turn his body to stone through that method so my evidence for this of course would just be that when she went to attack we have those panels and the sound effect was translated as blaze and it looks like her body itself is actually like becoming fire like or flame like so I think that she'll be able to turn her body into flames and that's probably her power but the thing is when they said split into five that can control elements they show five elements they show rock, water, flames, a plant, and some kind of crystal thing. So I guess maybe gemstones or some kind of crystal is their fifth element they're working with here. Um, but they show five elements. So I don't know if that means that the descendants of the native ones can control all five elements if they're the avatar, because that's what I thought at first, or now rereading the explanation. I don't know if it, if it means that or if it means each of the five of them their descendants can control one so somewhere down the line Rack and Hess were related and they can both control the earth element and that would mean that a different branch of that controls flames and another reason why I would say that I think it's a totally separate thing from um, Gura's family is because of that because they said the power specifically is to turn your body into an element or control elements or whatever and Yura doesn't do any of that Huang didn't do any of that, despite being Yura's brother, kind of. Um, and also, we can assume that Akka's part of that group. It's kind of just an assumption, but assuming that Akka's part of that group from the silhouette that we saw and from his kind of male-ish, kind of female-ish appearance, um, Akka uses heat, but he can't turn his body into fire. So I would say that Yura's family is a totally different thing. A different person that's a hard cursed because he's an asshole just going around cursing everybody. Um, so, yeah. Again, not really clear on whether their like, full-on avatar can control all the elements or each branch can control one. Um, and so that was my theory on Evan Kell's power. I had something else I wanted to say about this, but I'm hoping I'm not forgetting it. Oh yeah, I guess we don't know if Evan Kell can control other elements too really feel like there was something else I was supposed to say about the power of the ancients and all that that we had learned about. Oh well, if I'm forgetting it, we can talk about it in the comments or something. So uh, yeah, I just went back and made sure to look up all that since it was a talking point here and I wanted to uh, make it part of the discussion on the chapter for sure. 
Uh, but Yolker brings up that there are two high rankers here and 30 rankers. Uh, so there's a pretty strong force. And they didn't even know Evankel was going to be here. So they brought all that just for Yuan Sung. Um, then, hold on. Yeah, okay, never mind. Oh, and then Evankel brings up this flame Sasanuo thing that looks pretty beast-like. <clears throat> and I'm wondering if that is related to, like, uh, Rax species, the Wraith Razor. If, like, the Wraith Razor, Wraith Razor species is the stone descendant pure blood version, and whatever that fire giant, it kind of looked like it had a trunk, like it was some sort of elephant or something. Um, if that creature is part of some race that we haven't seen that's maybe gone extinct, that was the pure blood fire element, and that Evankel got powers from them. Because we know that the pure bloods were supposed to have been killed and wiped out. Uh, and even the non pure bloods are rare at this point. Um, but I remembered what I was going to say. We don't know if Evankel is actually a descendant of a native one. Uh, probably not pure blood, even if they are. Um, but we don't know if that's the case or. That scar and the different colored part of her face makes me think maybe she found some method or had some method to fuse uh, a native one into her and use their powers. Maybe she isn't a native, native one power user. Um, she's just a person who has taken the powers of a native one. Making her have less of a potential ceiling than Rack, I guess, who is pure blood. Uh, so there is that. That was what I was bringing up, is we don't know if she's actually part of the family or if she's just found a method of taking their powers. Um, kind of kind of like the blood fusion that the uh, Mad Dogs use. Um, so then next up, uh, the Guardian shows up, calls Evan kill a Chunibyo. That was, again, something else that was brought up in the uh, translation thing. Uh, because we in English don't really have a word for Chunibyo, and since not not everyone who reads Tower of God and watches the videos is probably a we an anime weeb as myself, um, Chunibyo is kind of like the direct translation would be like Chu is in Chugakse or middle school, and uh, Ni is in Ninense or second year. So and Byo is disease, so it's like um, <laughs> so it would be kind of like middle of middle school disease. And it refers to kind of when you're like an edgy teenager that thinks you're so cool and maybe you have special powers or something and you dr dress and act all weird to seem bigger than you are. And then you get older and you're like, oh, it was so embarrassing and cringy how I was when I was in middle school. Uh, and so people who still act that way are Chunibyo is kind of the uh, joking kind of insulting word used for people like that. And the closest I would think if I were to have to use an English term for it, the closest thing I think we would have to that in English is probably edgelord, where people are just into all this edgy middle school humor stuff, and then you get older and you're like, oh man, I was such an idiot. So I think edgelord might be the closest thing we have to, in English to Chunibyo. So basically, Evan Kell's just like, I'm going to use this big old flaming Sasanuo thing to destroy all of you. And the Guardian shows up and says, calm down, Edgelord. Uh, your power isn't that great. So uh, that's basically the, uh, the interaction they have. Uh, then he fires a blast that sends both Yuhan Sung and Evan Kell to the warp gate. So the Guardian is working on their side, which is cool. Um, and I think it might have something to do with the Guardian meeting bomb and taking a liking to him. Um, so we have that. Yuan Sung says they need to head to the last station. Uh, then we cut away from them for the rest of the chapter, yeah. Uh, we next see Albelda getting betrayed pretty much because Warian makes a deal to give White his power back by taking him to his final clone if he agrees to help everybody escape the Hell Train using that power. And I think basically everybody saw this coming. Like, as soon as we found out, oh, a bunch of rankers and high rankers and stuff were coming, myself and everybody in the comments, we were all saying, oh, White's going to get his power back and use it to fight back against the army. So I feel like a lot of us saw this coming. Um, again, that's not a bad thing, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of predictable. Um, 
then uh, Rachel reveals that she knew Arlen to bomb and then leaves, which is just this horrible dick move that is amazing. It is so villainous and great. Um, God, it is, it is hilariously villainous. Also, again, the translation, this is the only part of the translation. The rest, I was like, ah, oh, those are kind of small things. They aren't really that big a deal to me. This is the kind of bigger one, because she says, so long, Mr. Traveler. So when I was, um, when I was reading th for the live reaction, I was like, so is she leaving Traveler behind? What the heck does she mean by that? But the person who was correcting things said that so long shouldn't have been there. It should have just been Mr. Traveler. So... I guess Traveler's the one that used the explosion to make the hole for, and somebody else brought up that Traveler used explosives back in the workshop battle, so it all makes sense. So he's loyal to Rachel for whatever reason now, and has helped her escape. And we also know that Yura can teleport with up to two people at a time, so she teleports herself out of there and then probably grabbed the two of them and teleported everybody up out of there. But again, like I said in the live reaction, they've lost Kasano now, and if they're leaving, um, if they're leaving Joaquin behind as well, uh, Rachel's kind of lost all of her uh, potential allies, and she's back nearly alone all over again, uh, starting this team from scratch again. Uh, from there on, did I miss anything? Oh nope, we have a several months later time skip, which I actually think is really good. It feels weird that it took them several months to get from the last station, uh, do all the stuff we've seen since then, and they're still going several months before they get to the next one. Uh, but we see Ship Larey and Hatsu arrive to find an army at the last station. So this is amazing because not only are we going to have Ranker and High Ranker fights coming, but we have potential for so many returns. Um, like. I could see the army fighting against like Yuri, Evan, Jinsung, White, Karaka, Yuhan Sung, and Evan Kel. So we'd have seven rankers or high rankers fighting for Bomb's team to protect him and try to escape. Because even though Yuri's a princess and even those even those are hard likes her, his orders were to kill her, to kill everybody on the train. Or yeah, was it just every regular on the train or was it every one on the train? Because if it's every one, that would include Yuri. Um, and I, th I thought it was everyone on the train. So uh, Yuri is going to have people after her and she's going to have to defend herself. Um, so uh, yeah, every we could see any of those uh, high rankers and rankers fighting. Uh, and parts of that is I think that Jin Sung was told by Macheni, uh so that she can be like, oh, we got away and not really give herself away, but still give him the opportunity to go save them or to tip off FUG, and I think that's the big thing. Is Jinsung just gonna rush there to try to save Bomb? Or is Jinsung going to tell FUG, uh, we're under attack, I've been told that Zahard gave out an order to kill us, and we need to go protect Karaka and Bomb on the Hell Train, because if we lose two of them, that's two of our, Hell and White as well. If we lose the three of them, that's three FUG Slayers slash Slayer candidates down, and we would be totally screwed there. Um, so FUG definitely has a huge reason to want to save the people on the train since they have three slayers slash candidates there. Um, also, on the topic of... Oh wait, before that, we also have the drama of Yuri and Yu Han Sung. Yuri wanted to go out and uh, fight and possibly kill Yu Han Sung. So once she sees him show up to try to save Bomb, don't know how she'll react, but I'm totally team Yu Han Sung. I mean, I'm Team Yuri as well, but I'm Team Yuan Sung as in he's a good guy. He did pretty bad things to Bomb, but in the end, he didn't kill any of Bomb's teammates like he threatened to. Um, and in addition to that, he trained Bomb in how to defend himself to get up the tower. So, I mean, it was a bad thing, but he kind of did it for Bomb's own good, and he might have just been lying about hurting his teammates all along anyway. Um, we've seen he's not really that bad a person either from the... Um, from the virtual floor arc. So, uh, yeah, I'm totally Team Yon Sung. Also, possible returns that could help Bomb, like his teammates and stuff. We could have Team Ship, we already see they're there, and I would assume Anak is with the three that we saw, and I think there's more members of that team that I'm probably forgetting. Uh, but that team could show back up and really help Bomb out here. Um, team Novik could show back up. We have Novik, Ron, Dan, and Jaja out there somewhere. 
Elaine could return. We last saw her going off with um, Jinsung. So if Jinsung comes back, he might bring Elaine with him and kind of tell Elaine, okay, I helped you out of that place. Now you gotta help Bomb. Um, you gotta climb the tower with him to protect him because you're super friggin' strong. We could see Daniel or Akka come back with their teammates. I doubt this one. I doubt that they'll come back. I doubt we'll see them again at least anytime soon. Um, if we ever see them again, it might be just a thing where Bomb makes it to the top of the tower and we check back with all the characters that he met along the way. Um, I'm not sure that they'll be part of the main story ever again. But they could show back up. They totally could. We have Sachi and Boro traveling with Bomb. Akka and Dan Daniel got plenty of development. They could come back. Uh, and maybe they could bring with them some other characters like Felix and Hana. Some of the forgotten characters that like... They joined up with Bomb and agreed to help him, and he did just say, oh well, and left them behind. He's like, I won't leave my people behind, unless they're not that close to me. Felix and Hana, sorry, you're the ones that I can drop. Um, so some of their kind of side ally allies like that, I could... I would like to see again. One thing I would be beyond hype for if Horyang returns here. If Horyang comes back, I'm going to be completely hype. Kasano would probably be with him, so Horyang and Kasano would be great. Uh, Yiwan Danwa, just going back to reread the chapters about um, Yura's family and stuff, I remembered that they existed. So Yiwan Danwa could show up. They're trying to catch up to them by the time they reach the end of the Hell Train. Uh, and another big one would be that we still don't know what happened with Elliot, Angel, Quattro, and Chang. Now, I don't think we're going to see them again until we get to the Bay Road and have a Bay Road arc, but it's possible that they could return here. But I do think that when we see them return, it's probably going to be a case where Chang is like, okay, I took them because I wanted information out of the Mad Dog and the Angel. So uh, now that I've got our information, let's go infiltrate and take down the Bay Road or something. And I don't know what kind of um, reason Chang would have to go after them, uh, but I feel like we will have an arc like that. And I feel like Angel and Elliot could flip sides and be part of Bomb's team. It's a little bit of a stretch, but they've had that development where they're not horrible, terrible people, even though it's going to be hard to forgive Elliot for killing um, for killing the blue guy that I really liked. Man, I'm forgetting his name, just calling him the blue guy. Uh, he was Akka's servant. Oh god, why am I forgetting his name? Oh well, blue guy that helped Daka. I really liked the guy. He used the staff and stuff, and he got killed. So, uh, R.I.P. blue guy. Uh, but yeah, all those would be cool returns. I wouldn't even rule out a few kind of random people showing up, kind of like Varagarv. Uh, if F.U.G. is all showing up to try to get the Slayers out of there, Varagarv could definitely be back. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Lero Ro or Quant come back because they really want to protect their students and all that. Um, and it would be cool to see them show up and reunite with Yuan Sung and Evan Kell as kind of the floor of test team. Um, I could totally see that happening. And uh, I don't think Wal Hikesong or Yurik will get involved because we've had Yurik a ton lately and this kind of really isn't his beef. Uh, also, <laughs> Big Daddy Luzlek could just show up and save everyone and tell Bomb more about his past. If F.U.G. is getting involved because three of their Slayers could potentially die, um, I could totally see Luzlek not wanting to take that chance, just showing up to get everybody out of there and take them somewhere safe, and then he could have his sort of uh, speech to Bomb where he's like, this is what I know about your past and about your father and mother and how much I cared about them, and now I want you to help me kill Zahard. And Bomb has to decide whether he wants to work with F.U.G. or whether he wants to decide you guys are a little bit too evil so I'd rather do this on my own and not fall into uh, F.U.G.'s tactics. So uh, I could totally see something like that happening and it would be completely awesome too. Uh, and for blog information, CU says that it feels like a section's ended and a new section is coming uh, and that kind of goes into what I said I've been thinking anyway, where it feels like we're going towards the end of Hell Train and we're going to be getting into the next one. Since the 
since the series is kind of separated into Volume 1, then Return of the Prince, and then Workshop Battle, and then the Hell Train, each of them with pretty big time skips between them. Once we get to the end of the Hell Train, don't know if we'll be getting a big time skip or not, but there's definitely going to be a big shift from that over into the next part after Hell Train. Um, but kind of something else with that. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to find my wording here. But kind of something else with that is that I don't know what kind of uh, hiatus CU might take because of that. If it's another five month one, that is going to be a bit of a crazy time. It's going to be a bit of a hard time waiting. I remember it was hella hard waiting that super long, like five month break that CU took between uh, Workshop Battle and Hell Train. Um, so, uh, yeah, then uh, CU also hypes up Kalavan in the blog as like the the next big antagonist on a large scale. And it's not really going to be a bomb antagonist, at least not anytime soon, uh, but it's going to be kind of a high ranker versus high ranker type antagonist. Like, like he said, a large scale one. Um, he also mentions Burning and Rax Reveal when talking about Evankel. Again, sort of reinforcing that Evankel either is a relative of the native ones, whether pure blood or not pure blood. Uh, probably not pure blood because they don't look bestial like Rack, but we don't really know that all of the ancient ones looked like that. So, uh, or all of the native ones looked like that. Or if Evankel just took the power. But like I said, I think the power is going to be able to uh, turn to flames and use flames in the same way that Rack can turn to rock. Um, then, uh, anything else? Oh yeah, in the blog, he says that something he would like to draw sometime, sometime in the future, but he can't because he's focusing on the actual main story, is that the floor of test was really hellish under Evankel until Evankel handed things over to Yuan Sung, and Yuan Sung turned it into a proper operation. So uh, again, that would be cool to see in the future. Uh, so yeah, thoughts as a whole, that's all over. I did think it was an amazing chapter. A ton of things happened, and I loved the new characters and the crazy setup. There was so much discussion. I knew this uh, review was going to take a long time because of how much discussion there'd have to be, uh, just because reacting to it and reading it took me a good 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, that's it. It was a great, amazing, long chapter, and I would give it I struggled with whether to give it a perfect score or not, but I'll give it just below perfect to try to reserve and save perfect scores for something really special. Um, so I'm going to give it 9.75. Uh, random time jumps out of 10? It's not necessarily that random, but I certainly wasn't expecting us to take a several month time jump. Uh, so yeah, 9.75 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like If you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this chapter and what you thought of my thoughts on it. Uh, subscribe for more. Tower of God, much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you up to there and stuff for the channel. And um, I guess if uh, you want a link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us on Discord, just ask and I'll give you a link to that. So that's it. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.